Hare Krishna, I hope I look presentable. I didn't, you know, prepare for this. This is a spur of the moment recording, but there's so much going on in the world that I have to share some of my thoughts. You know what I mean? So, here it goes. First of all, um, there's a water restriction going on in California because they're experiencing major drought. Regular citizens are now facing severe restrictions, and the problem with that is that the farmers are not facing any severe restrictions. And people like um, Nestle... Nestle has a bottled water operation that they're basically sucking the earth dry over there, Nestle. And you can look at the leader of the company and tell that he's a Rakshasa or what we call a reptilian lizard humanoid being. Like he basically said humans don't even have the right to drinking water. Basically his company has the right to drinking water but not human beings. Okay. The farmers in California are not facing any severe water restrictions and you say well that's good because people need to eat but let's look at it from the grassroots level you and i in california can only use a certain amount of water we can't water our lawns we can't wash our cars no more but the farmer who's not growing food for human consumption he's growing food for the beef and the dairy industry so that they could feed the lambs the sheep the chicken the, the cows, they want to feed these animals so that they could chop the animals up and put their dead carcass in a supermarket for you to eat. Or you say, what's wrong with that? We got to eat. Yes, but even the animal and even the human body needs to drink. So you're always going to need water. So we're going to use all of our water to grow fruits and vegetables and grains to feed cows that we're going to kill anyway. Good. I might as well buy some stock in cow blood and start selling cow blood because people will be drinking cow blood in California when there's no more water left. So shout out to my Prabhuji Narsim Hadev and his beautiful wife Kamala. I pray that you guys will be alleviated from this drought soon and if not that Krishna enables you to move from that area to a more arable area. And I say yeah, let the people take lift the restrictions off of the people, put the restrictions on the farmer so we'll have less cow slaughter. And the people will grow their own fruits and vegetables in their front and backyard. I mean, come on. We got to return to, we got to respect the planet Earth. I told my son, turn off the light. I said, every time you leave the light on and go to school, somebody in the third world country is going to suffer. See, what we don't realize is that the things we do on this side of the planet Earth affects people on the other side of the planet Earth. A person in Mexico right now could be picking his nose. And somehow that act of him picking his nose, somebody takes a picture, puts it on Instagram, it starts, it goes viral, and next thing you know, people are talking about racist, booger-picking Mexicans, and next thing you know, people are getting lynched over a man picking his nose. People in Indonesia are getting raped because of a man picking his nose. Yeah, I know it's a stretch, it's an, it's an exaggeration, but man, everything we do on one side of the planet Earth affects somebody on the other side of the planet Earth. Anyway... The main topic is, and this won't be long because I got to go. I got to go to work. I got to cut my hair. I got stuff to do. I was at a lecture. I was at Krishna Balaram Mandir in Queens about two weeks ago, and one of Prabhupada's disciples gave a lecture. And he basically said that there's three things that contribute to disease. He said they are anxiety, irregularity, and uncleanliness. Anxiety. How is it that the stock market is doing better than ever? It's up in the 20,000s. People are getting richer and richer and richer. But more and more people are going broke. More and more people are complaining about their $5 an hour McDonald jobs. More and more people are suffering and struggling. But the stock market is better than ever. So this tells me this stock market is not designed for me and you. Especially me in a black body. You see, coming through a black body, you know what I'm saying? When I went through Wall Street, it wasn't to make money. It was so I could be sold. So they could examine my teeth. So they could examine my chest, my hair, my bodily structure. So they could examine my genitals and my... my, my um genetic whatever my genetic strength so last time i was on wall street i wasn't collecting no ones and zeros i became a zero speaking of ones and zeros i'd like to quickly touch on a soft subject about how they say in the scriptures that krishna is the only the only male and everybody else is female it's really simple in this universe you have data data is composed of ones and zeros one is on zero is off all living entities are actually Krishna. They are actually God, but they are God without power. Krishna is God with power. So we are all zeros. Krishna is the one. When you add one to any zero, 
it multiplies exponentially. So even if I'm a zero, if I put myself next to Krishna, I'm a 10. And you grab another zero, we become a 100. And you grab another zero, we become a 1,000. Add infinitum. So yes, Krishna is the only male, meaning he is the one with all the potency. He's the original. He's the source. He gives all living. And there's not one living entity who has created anything. Everything is an offshoot of Krishna's energy. When you look out there in the sky, when you look in the blackness of the vacuum of space, everything is full. It might not be perceivable by your senses, but there are living entities in every sphere and in every element in, in this material world. So don't, don't think there's a such thing as vacuum or void. Anyway, back to the original subject, anxiety. Boom. Right now, the highest selling drugs in the world, in America definitely, is a multi-billion, four billion, five billion dollar industry a year, is anxiety and antidepressant drugs. Right now, we're living in a time where people think that science and knowledge is God. Well, we're at a height of science and knowledge, but people are still depressed. People are still struggling. People are still getting impotent, and they still got to get drugs. You know what I mean? People are still sad. It's still, it's really messed up. People are getting more sad. With more technology comes more sadness. With more sadness comes more death. We had a guy named Nikola Tesla, and he said, listen, I got this thing called a death ray. If you put it in your country, nobody will attack you. Why won't anybody attack you? Because this death ray can shoot down enemy missiles and enemy planes before they even get to your shores. And he wanted to distribute this technology to every country on the planet Earth. In other words, everybody has a strong sword. Nobody will attack the next man. That was the idea. Instead, they went with Einstein, who helped them create a nuclear bomb which can destroy the whole planet. You see right there that this technology is killing us. This is not real technology. We need spiritual technology. You can go to the other side of the moon and then you come back to the planet Earth and then see a New York City detective um, abusing an Indian man because he honked at him. This is the level of civilization that we, we claim is the great Western society. To hell with it. Let it burn. Anyway, anxiety is a major cause. Stress. Chanting Sanskrit mantras chanting Gregorian mantras meditation to a certain extent meditation doesn't work so well because meditation is for people who have strong minds and still minds which is not one of the attributes of Kali Yuga people have weak short monkey minds in Kali Yuga so meditation is like man you're gonna have to focus on something and it's better to focus on sound so we chant Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare and if you do scientific research on the chanting of mantras especially Hare Krishna mantra what it does is suppresses your stress hormones it suppresses the aging hormones the Bible says that your days of aging is from sunrise to sunset meaning when the Sun is in the sky although it is beneficial in some terms it also causes you to age and the only thing according to Srimad Bhagavatam I believe it's the sixth canto in the same one where it speaks about the story of a Jamila it speaks about the, that you can prolong your life by chanting the holy names it sounds sentimental until you do the scientific research and find out that this Vedic way of life is the way of life for all living and entities who are encased in a humanoid form meaning 400,000 species of living entities are to take to the Vedic way if they are to be considered human beings anxiety we got to get rid of the anxiety we got to do things to relieve our anxiety next uncleanly no irregularity irregularity is today I set my alarm for 601 tomorrow 530 on the weekends I'll set it for 730 there is no regularity your body goes off of something called circadian rhythms where when the Sun rises it activates the pineal gland which releases serotonin that is the daytime hormone all of the deities of the ancient comedic system whether it's from sunrise Haru am Achet or Haru on the horizon all the way down to sunset like Atuma, Atana, there's so many deities and Ra is the midday sun all of these deities right represent different phases of the serotonin levels in your brain that's why the eye of the Ra, the eye of Ra is just a side view of the brain and the, the thalamus, I don't know all of the organs in the brain, the thalamus no thalamus is the heart, hypothalamus is in the brain pineal gland and pituitary gland if you look at them sideways they look just like the eye of Ra so these people were super scientists and they knew about regularity and hormones circadian shifts just like you're not supposed to eat heavy foods after a certain time why because in the early in the morning is when Surya Surya Vamsa the Sun God comes out Kepri pushes him across the sky early in the morning the fire in your stomach starts to warm up 
around noon the fire in your stomach is very bright and very high that's why you're supposed to eat like a prince in the day you're supposed to eat a big meal at noon then in the evening as the circadian rhythm takes over and the body the the the, the uh fire in your stomach goes down sunset you eat a light dinner and you get prepared for bed because after sunset your body starts to secrete melatonin melanin the black chemical which is causes you to go into the astral dimension so we have regularity and of course you know the enemy strikes at the crack of dawn be regular in your habits i always tell my son do things the same way the same time every day it, it, some people will say that's predictable but i say if you should suddenly go blind you'll know where your toothbrush is you'll know where your toothpaste is because you put it at the same place every day you do the same thing the same way every day my techniques never change with my son and i often get on him for straying away from the plan because you mess things up when you do things in an irregular fashion do things the same way at least you have a pattern it'll be automatic when people do martial arts they practice slow they practice slow they practice slow but when it's time to fight they fight fast they fight fast they fight fast so have some regularity don't change up here's another thing and this is unrelated but it's related men and women get together the men come into the relationship hoping that the woman never changes and the woman comes into the relationship thinking that she could change the man and ultimately both of them end up disappointed so have regular habits don't change up don't change don't change a player's game in a knife inning have regular habits that way your body can get on rhythm if, if I should suddenly go blind in this house right now, I would like to know that I could get out if there's a fire. If the lights go off, I need to know. So I need to regularly understand where the exits are, the safety entrances, where the elevators are. Regular habits, please. We need regularity. And we can go so deep on that subject, I might have to do a part two on this video. And last but not least, uncleanliness. I mean, come on. You got to separate the clean from the dirty simple things for those of you who eat meat you can't take the knife that you cut the chicken with and then go cut the vegetables with you know what i'm saying it's just not gonna work it's salmonella you know regular things as soon as you come in the house wash your hands you know your hands been all over the bus the steering wheel um the mexican boogers you've been picking all kind of noses you've been doing all kind of things with your hands you come in the house you don't go in your fridge you don't go in your kitchen you take that jacket off the Sikhs, the Sikh people don't even take a bath before they go in their bedroom. I have an aunt, Jamaican, aunt and uncle over in England, that when you go to their house and have dinner, you have to take a bath first. In England, you can't just come in your street clothes and sit on people's bed because you're carrying all of these germs from outside. So we're talking about cleanliness is divine. It's next to godliness. Cleanliness can go in so many directions to promoting your health. But don't mix the clean with the unclean. That's what we're trying to say. And try to be a little more clean in your habits. And that will cut down on the amount of bacteria and viruses in your environment. So I just want to share that with y'all. And, you know, have a good day. All right? Hare Krishna.